In this video, I'd like to discuss why E1 reactions are stereoselective but not stereospecific, and why E1 reactions will not form an alene. If you're not certain what an alene is, you will know by the end of this video. In front of you, I'm starting with the ChemActivity 11 addendum, and essentially it's addendum number one. You can see under number one, we have an example of an E2 sort of reaction, where we have an alkyl halide with a strong base. Now, as you may recall, E2 reactions require an anti-periplanar arrangement of the beta hydrogen and the corresponding leaving group. So let us first of all label the beta hydrogen, which would be right here. And of course, this is our leaving group. The strong base would pick up the proton, a pi bond would form, and leaving group would leave. If I emphasize that we have a methyl group here and a methyl group here coming out at us, and if the beta hydrogen and the leaving group are on the same plane, then we would expect that these two methyl groups would be on the same side once the pi bond forms. Now if we take the stereoisomer of our first alkyl halide, and so you can see We've essentially kept the leaving group the same. It's the same absolute configuration about the alpha carbon there. But what we have done is switch the groups of the CH3 and the CH2CH3 where the beta hydrogen resides. So once again, here's our beta hydrogen. Here's our leaving group. Now we've got our strong base, picks up the proton, pi bond forms, leaving group leaves. Now I emphasize that we have a CH2 group coming out at us and a CH3. Here's that CH2, here's the CH3. They are on the same side. This is the corresponding product that will form. You can see that these reactions, because there's only one beta hydrogen on the beta carbon, these reactions are stereospecific. One stereoisomer gives rise to a particular stereoisomer product. In the first case, the product would be what we consider to be E. And I say that because we can see that the higher priority groups are on opposite sides. In the second case, the stereoisomer that forms would be the Z, because the higher priority groups are on the same side. I will once again emphasize that these reactions are anti-periplanar. Anti means the leaving group has to be a full 180 degrees away from the beta hydrogen. Peri means that the beta hydrogen and the leaving group have to be on the same plane. These reactions are, as we say, stereospecific, and all stereospecific reactions are stereoselective, in that in the first example, E forms over the Z. In the second example, Z forms over the E. Except, in these cases, this is an extreme example of stereoselectivity in that there is essentially none of the other possible stereoisomer. Let us now turn our attention to the E1 sort of reaction. In class, I said that E1 reactions do not require an anti-periplanar arrangement of the leaving group. Therefore, these reactions are not stereospecific. As it turns out, however, these reactions are stereoselective, and an E1 reaction has to be periplanar. So this means that actually the unoccupied p orbital that results when the carbocation forms has to be in the same plane as the beta hydrogen that is removed. Let us look at an example. You can see that I'm starting with the same stereoisomer that I did in the top example, except in this case what we're going to do is to emphasize an elimination reaction. We are going to apply heating, and of course we have here a weak base. Therefore, we would expect an E1 sort of reaction. The leaving group will leave. 
we now have the carbocation. Now I said that the beta hydrogen has to be on the same plane as the unoccupied p orbital. Well this is the case in the drawing here. So the next step would be our weak base pulls off the proton and the pi bond will form. As a result, if we pay attention to our CH3 groups, we will form this particular product. It is possible, however, having this carbocation to have rotation about the carbon to carbocation bond. Now let us see if I can emphasize this arrow right here. So I'm, I'm showing a curved arrow. This is not a reaction arrow, but it's to say that this sigma bond can rotate. And if it rotates 180 degrees, once again, we will have a beta hydrogen in the plane of the p orbital. This is periplanar. The weak base, as in water molecule, will pull off a proton and a pi bond will form. We notice we have a CH2 and a CH3. The CH2, CH3 are on the same side. This product will form. So in this case, one stereoisomer can give rise to two stereoisomers. The reaction is stereoselective because one of these stereoisomers is preferred, and that is the stereoisomer that has the E configuration. The larger groups are further from one another. This is the E configuration. This is the Z configuration. So this structure represents the molecule that would be as the major product. Next, let's look at the second stereoisomer. So just to make the connection, in my top example, when we were examining E2 reactions, we looked at a second stereoisomer. Here is that same stereoisomer. If we apply heating, and of course we have a weak nucleophile, we will have an E1 reaction. Leaving group leaves. Now we have the carbocation that is formed. Our beta hydrogen is periplanar. The hydrogen is removed, the pi bond forms. We form this first product. I notice the CH2 and the CH3s are on the same side. This product that we have just formed is the Z product. Next, we allow for a 180 degree rotation. Once again, the beta hydrogen is periplanar with the p orbital of the carbocation. The base pulls off the proton pi bond forms. I notice that the methyl groups are on the same side. As a result, this particular product will form. This particular product has the E configuration. This will be the major product. Once again, this reaction is stereoselective. Notice that both of these stereoisomers will form the same major product. This reaction is not stereospecific, but rather stereoselective. There is the requirement that the unoccupied p orbital be periplanar with the beta hydrogen that is removed. Hopefully that has allowed you to sort out the difference between a stereospecific reaction, as in the case of E2 with the antiperiplanar requirement, and a stereoselective only situation of the E1, where the unoccupied p orbital must be periplanar. As a last example, let's look at this situation. You can see that we have a weak base, and we will apply heating so as to emphasize an E1 reaction. We'll allow the leaving group to leave, and then we can see a certain carbocation forms. Now, I show this example because my experience is sometimes when students see this, they are tempted to consider this particular beta hydrogen as the hydrogen that is removed. If that hydrogen were to be removed, there would be two double bonds side by side. That is what we call an allene. Recall that in order for an E1 reaction to occur, the beta hydrogen has to be periplanar 
from the p orbital of the carbocation. Now we have p orbitals already involved in making the first double bond that's on the left. As it turns out, the p orbital that's associated with the carbocation would be aligned with the p orbitals of that double bond. This allows for delocalization of electrons and stabilization of the carbocation. As a result, it is possible for the beta hydrogen on an adjacent carbon to be periplanar. However, notice that this particular hydrogen, the hydrogen that is associated with the carbon-carbon double bond, it is not possible if the p orbitals of the double bond are in resonance with the p orbital of the carbocation, it's not possible for that beta hydrogen to be periplanar with the p orbital. Therefore, it is not that hydrogen that gets removed. Rather, it is this hydrogen that is removed. And as a result, we can see, and maybe I'll just go through the steps. As a result, we see that a pi bond is formed and we have this conjugation that is alternating double, single, double bonds, which results in an enhanced stabilization. So this is the product that we would expect. We would not expect, however, to form this alene. So keep that in mind when you're considering various reactions. This is our alene, and these things do not form for reasons that I have just described. I hope that you have found this video helpful when we have dug a little bit deeper in thinking about the difference between stereospecific, stereoselective, and the requirement of the periplanar p-orbital in an E1 elimination reaction.